Hello everybody, welcome back to uh, the FTCR LP of DuckTales Remastered and we're now joined by uh, Canada's favourite superhero, the Great Clement. Aloha! So Clement, I'm, as I'm sure people know, you obviously are a big fan of the uh, NES the DuckTales game and, and, uh, and this one. What was your first experience with, with the game? Uh, with the original or remastered? Uh, let's start with the original. Uh, well, I was like eight years old when I played the original DuckTales. Uh, my friend had an NES. He had like uh, DuckTales 1. He didn't have DuckTales 2. I didn't play that until I was like in high school or whatever. But I played the original DuckTales and I eventually got good enough at it that I was almost kind of speedrunning the game a little bit where I'd be able to beat it in like maybe an hour, if that. <laughs> and, um,. You know, I just, I loved the Amazon music, I loved the moon music, I loved just playing it. It was, it was super fun. It was a little easy, but, you know, it was super fun. And uh, when I heard that, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, what's the company that, that made this game? Way Forward. Way Forward, that's right. When I heard Way Forward was remaking this game, I was kind of giddy, because I, I didn't, that was the last thing I sort of expected to hear, was that they were going to remake the original <laughs> DuckTales. <laughs> I know. I I actually remember where I my my parents were visiting for the first time uh, after I'd moved to America, and we were driving to a place called Spaghetti Warehouse. And I'm checking Twitter, and I was like, "Ducktales remastered! This is the best day ever!" <laughs> Spaghetti and Ducktales. <laughs> I what could possibly go wrong? And this is the definitive Ducktales. Like the original's good, but after playing remastered, it's hard to go back to the original. <laughs> <laughs> Just because these remixes are so freaking good. Oh yeah. Jay Kaufman's work ah oh, is beautiful. Um, one thing I think, and um, because I, I I believe a few about a month or so before the game came out, there was like these uh, Way Forward and Capcom would release these documentaries on on YouTube. And I believe what they've said is that like the the level design from NES to remastered, it it's pretty much the same. Only the remaster has added certain sections. But, like, the general layout of each level is practically the same. Yeah, they're exactly the same, but the Amazon probably highlights one of the big gameplay differences is that all the levels are very straightforward, and you can skip past a lot of it. It's literally just get to the boss, kill the boss. So what they did to essentially expand the game, especially with the Amazon, is that in the original NES, there was hidden big chests of gems because the whole point of NES was that there was also a good ending where if you got 10 million money, because I don't actually know what the currency of Duckburg is. So if you make 10 million money, find two hidden treasures, you get the good ending. So in order to do that, uh, it didn't really require, but it helped a lot to find all of the big uh, treasure chests hidden within the level. Uh, there is no good bad ending in Remastered, so what they did was that with the Amazon, in areas where there were hidden big chests or big chests of treasure, they instead put these coins. So you're forced to explore the whole level now instead of just exploring these areas that were originally optional. Yeah, it basically makes you explore the whole thing. Well, yeah, which you know I like it because it kind of it, it forces you to, as MBM said, experience the entire game rather than because like again, as MBM said in the original Amazon, you can you can ignore half, most of that level design to get to the boss. Oh yeah, the, the, like the African Mines level in the NES, you can like go down the right pathway and hop on all these guys who are jumping out of this bottomless pit and just go right to the boss door and completely skip the entire level. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, hell, with, in the, with the moon level, you can just get hit by an enemy to glitch into the block and bypass the entire gyro section. Yeah. <laughs> so, MBM, it is, it, from what I understand, then you're saying that the original NES DuckTales game is a, a speedrunner's delight. It's a pretty fun game to speedrun. I mean, it's only like 10 minutes long and you have one little fun glitch to do in it. It's a cool game to speedrun. So, I mean, I, th I think one of them, um, I, I know that we're probably hitting this topic a bit a bit early, but I know that um, during the, the production of this, Capcom and WayForward said they were open to the idea of, of remastering more old uh, like, like Disney afternoon games. It's been like three years. Where the fuck is my Chip and Dale remastered? <laughs> <laughs> well, the fact that I believe like two of the 
crew members who worked on this game have already left way forward, that's not helping the process, so... Yeah, it's gonna be a while there. Well, see, but do, do you think the notion of having more remastered games is dead at this point? Because it, it's been a while. From what I understand, DuckTales remastered so good. I mean, it, it obviously sold well because they made physical releases for PS3 and Wii U. I don't think it's dead. I just think that it, we're going to have to wait for Way Forward to settle down a bit here. So we're going to have to wait for, for Way Forward to stop making crappy Adventure Time games. We're gonna have to wait for that, maybe wait for the Shantae hype to mellow out a bit, and then yes, then we can get more Disney games. I just seriously, I, I just want, I just want Jim and their remastered, just so I can have Jake Corbin remixes of all those levels, man. Dude, I need Duck, t or not Duck, because I need Darkwing Duck remastered. Oh, that'd be so good. Come on, did you ever play, uh, did you ever play Darkwing Duck uh, on the NES? Uh, no, I've always heard good things. I think I've played the first level on an emulator once, but uh, I still got to sit down and actually play that. It's Mega Man 6 with hanging. It is it's Mega Man 6 with a dock. It's fucking beautiful. The one Disney game I've always wanted to remaster for is uh, one of my favorite Sega Genesis titles, uh, Quackshot, where basically Donald Duck is like Indiana Jones. Yep. And it, it's sort of like a Metroidvania in that you collect items and you go back to places, but it's not really backtracky, that game, because... Every time you reach the end of a level, he places like a checkpoint there, and then you just start from there whenever you go back to that level. But uh, that level was fun because you kept getting upgrades, like you'll get different plungers that would stick into walls, and then you have to bring this item to this place and this place. And it's just a good platformer. And I want my quack shot remastered, damn it. Um, the, the plunger mechanic is actually from Darkwing Duck. So, oh, is it? Yeah, you actually get a bunch of different uh, arrow shots, and one of his uh, dark guns is. It sticks to walls, so you create your own platforms to go higher. I'll have, have to play it eventually, but uh, I got so much on my table right now. It won't be for a while. Yeah. But uh, that actually reminds me, Crackshot reminds me of uh, uh, Maui Mallard. I always get tongue-tied when I try to say that. But that one's just Donald Duck on vacation, and it's a video game. <laughs> is that the, which, is, which, which is the one we're on the cover... He's like a ninja wearing a blindfold. Which one's that? That might actually just be Maui Mallard. Yeah, I think it is. <laughs> there are way too many Donald Duck games. Homeboy gets a lot of video games. Well, let, let's be fair. Out of, out of the kind of core Disney cast, he's the most interesting. It is true, because let's see. Mickey Mouse gets a lot of the like fantasy-based platformers. Donald Duck, you can pretty much put him in any situation. It's like, yep, that makes sense. Donald Duck in space? Yep, makes sense. Donald Duck in medieval times? Yep, makes sense. Donald Duck at the base of a volcano? Uh, crispy, but makes sense. <laughs> Donald Duck fighting Sephiroth? Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they picked him for Kingdom Hearts. There you go. I love Kingdom Hearts 2, if only for the fact that they got the voice actor for Donald to go, It's Sephiroth! <laughs> That's my favorite line in Kingdom Hearts 2, just because the idea of Donald Duck saying Sephiroth is hilarious to me. No, no, no. And the fact that they're on a first name basis. Oh my He's not God. even surprised, like, hey, look, it's that bitch. <laughs> Some, like, like, I like the Kingdom Hearts games generally, but sometimes, like, sometimes you gotta just sit back and just realize how stupid it is, you know? <laughs> You realize how stupid it is, but then the anime music starts, and it just all washes away. <laughs> so, Clement, uh, you said you said that the Amazon was was one of your favorites. Well, what about this level in, in particular? Kind of um, stands out to you. Uh, I like the parts where you have to basically pogo. Like in the underground, there's lots of vines on the ceiling, so like. You can't just hold the pogo down. You actually have to sort of let go of the pogo in midair because that's one of the mechanics of DuckTales that I always liked was, you know, Scrooge just sort of goes right back down as long as you let go of the pogo button. So I can just sort of, like, bounce, let go, hold the button again, bounce, let go, hold the button, you know, just keep doing that over and over and over again. I kind of like the going through the underground stuff like that, dodging the ceiling, making sure I don't bump into it. Oh, God, I love that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I... I, I should... 
I said this in part one, this is not by any means a flawless run because sometimes certain, like, um, pain animation is hilarious. Like that where he's, he's trying to be eaten by a giant flower. Pain animation is the actual technical term. Alright, nerd. No, I was, I was just saying you're right. Fuck. <laughs> also, we're going to the right when in the original NES version we went to the left. This is an inaccurate remake. Zero out of ten. Too much right. Too I, much right. I, I make the joke, but I swear to God, there is a forum post somewhere on the internet that makes that point. And that person needs to die. <laughs> well, it's like, well, like it's a, I, I imagine it's probably the same person who complained about Sky Sanctuary being too yellow. You're too yellow. <laughs> it was too yellow. <laughs> Is it too late to kick him out of the park? <laughs> so, so uh, Clement, thoughts on hearing Anne and Young back at Scrooge McDuck? Oh, that's also the best part. I, I so was not expecting the original voice actors to come back either. Like, I, I thought they were going to get a good sound-alike or something, but when they actually got, like, the original cast... I mean, there are some sound-alikes. They're not all back, but... Well, everyone... everyone <laughs> I think it's, like it's everyone who's alive is back. Everyone who unfortunately has passed on, they, they had to get a, a sound-alike. Yeah, but it's like a lost episode of DuckTales coming back in, like, 2013, whenever this game came out, and it's like, what the hell? Ha! <laughs> Because I, I remember reading something with, apparently, um, Way Forward would just go to have text cutscenes, but then uh, Disney were actually want to, like, why don't you just get the voice actors back? Like, we have all their numbers. And they were like, really? <laughs> will you pay for that? Sure, why not? We'll get, we'll get Adam Young back. You're not doing much of anything. It's been like, since, since this, um, since this, like, this game is not the last time Adam Young has voiced Scrooge McDuck. Because they, um, since I, since I believe it started in 2011, Disney kind of um, rebranded Mickey Mouse, and he is a, a bunch of like like five minute shorts all done in Flash. Um, and Scrooge McDuck, Scrooge McDuck shows up in one of them. And even Adam Young was like 95, so I mean, props to that guy, man. He's he's like 95 and still voicing this insane bastard duck. At that yeah, point, right. you really are just doing it for the love of the character. It's like you don't need money. You're not. You don't even need work. You're 95. Just. Take it. Just sit on your porch, yell at clouds, enjoy the rest of your life. <laughs> just damn. <laughs> well, it's like again, um, the voice actor, for, voice actress for um, Magicka the Spell, June Foray. She's like almost a hundred, and she still voices characters. You know, I think she's probably most well known for being um, Granny in like the um, Sylvester and Tweety shorts, who she still voices whenever that character pop pops up. Yeah. So in this area, in the original NES, uh, Launchpad's actually standing in this area, and I believe it's if the last two digits of your money are... Clement, what is it that you need for the minigame? I think one of the digits has to be seven. It's okay. I thought it was like either the last two or one of the digits has to be seven. Uh, Launchpad says you want to go back to Duckburg, and you just play a mini game where Launchpad throws money out the window, and Scrooge McDuck, with his everlasting greed, tries to salvage all of the money before it falls to the planet. <laughs> and you go to Duck. <laughs> it's just a way to get even more money, and then uh, you re-enter the level for an opportunity to get even more money from all the chests that you hopefully opened the first time you went through the level. I forget though. Don't you don't you have to do that to get the, the good ending? I don't know if you have to do those mini games, but it's it helps a lot to get money. Cause the thing about the NES version is once you clear a level, you're locked out of it. So yeah, you, yeah. It, it's just a way to let you redo levels. So you know you get all the chests the first time, go to Duckburg, go through the level again, get all the chests. You essentially doubled the value of a level. Because that's pretty nice. much what you have to do with the first game, is you're maximizing the value per level in order to get the 10 million, I guess, dollar, or or bills. <laughs> 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 what we what we, we just saw there with Mrs. Beagley throwing, um, like, the health items, the ice cream and cakes, I believe in the original um, build of DuckTales, food with, like, hamburgers and steaks and... Uh, Disney were like, don't do that. Make it ice cream. And they were like, okay. <laughs> also, in that area, too, um, 
you kind of went on a north passage and opened some chests. In the original NES, that actually led to a teleporter to send you straight to the boss because where that statue was in the NES, there's a toll where he tells you that you have to pay so much money. However, you can lead one of those enemies into that room bounce off of him and grab the rope so you can bypass the toll because above the toll statue is one of the nephews and even more treasure so you can bypass the toll get the additional treasure and just get more money which is the true Scrooge McDuck fashion of playing a video game do rich yeah. get richer I also like it as a good callback in this game where the, the toll's not there anymore, but the statue still is. So when you destroy the statue, he gives you $300,000, which is what you <laughs> paid in the original game. So it's like, you got your money back after like 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> I just never paid it in the first place. Yeah, because you know what? Scrooge McDuck never would. He just beat... He, you know what? That's something I've always been curious about. I think... And I mean, you and I have talked about this, you know, like the, the pogo mechanic. It's very unique, with the exception of Cranky Kong stealing it in a Tropical Freeze. Like, you never really see this type of gameplay, like, of pogoing on enemies. It's amazingly unique. Yeah, well, pogoing is now starting to become a lot more common. I mean, Shovel Knight being the big thing. But the thing I love about this is that pogoing is essentially synonymous with DuckTales at this point. Because anytime nowadays something involves pogoing it's always pogoing like in ducktales like really i would figure <laughs> pogoing like the pogo stick but uh no the mechanic of pogoing on enemies has become synonymous with ducktales so yeah i mean even if another game has done pogoing this is the game that everyone uh correlates to that mechanic which i think is pretty interesting that you can have an entire mechanic just become synonymous and interchangeable with a game so yeah uh, one thing about ducktales remastered uh, one of the big criticisms it got when it first came out um was that you know stuff like this where scrooge is talking it, it's great to have the characters back but there's always so many cut scenes that like people think it, it got it interrupted the flow of the game where you have to keep pushing pause and going to skip cinematic and stuff. Uh, but there was a patch. Some people don't know about this patch that uh, I think it came out maybe a month or so after the game came out, or maybe it was always there and I just never noticed. But um, you can go into the options after you've beaten the game once, and there's a, a skip cinematic option where you can toggle that on as long as you have like all the latest patch. And when you pick up coins in the Amazon, he just picks it up and there's no dialogue at all. Uh, so... If you're if you're bothered by the cutscenes and stuff in remastered, you do have to beat the game once with the cutscenes, uh, but you can look in the options and there is a way to skip the cinematics afterwards. Cool. I would say probably the the biggest change slash deviation to the original game that that remastered takes is, is the boss fights because um, the, Ducktales is a great game. The bosses they're kind of uh, generic for like an NES platformer, and this one they they add a lot more different than the. Basically, the, the bosses are hard, and they have more ways to kill you <laughs> in Remastered versus the original. Oh, like yeah. It's just like, when we get to uh, Transylvania, like, in the original, Magic Girl, the spell just turns into, like, a vulture and flies back and forth. And in, like, this one, she's like, throws, like, fire at you and shit. Like, there's so much more extra stuff that, that's just, you know, it can just get hurt in more ways. This boss was the easiest boss of the original. All he did was he slid left and right, he jumped occasionally, <laughs> and then you bounced on him three or four times, and that was it. There was That's none of the pillars trying to crush you. Yeah, pretty much. So, come on, you kind of brought up DuckTales uh, 2. And, um, like, what did you? What, what was your general experience there? Because I actually had that. I owned... I My, my cousin had DuckTales 1, and I played that a lot. But as a kid, I actually only owned 2. And it's like... It's a decent game. It's just, for me, it's just not as fun as, uh, as, as the DuckTales 1. I think it has something to do with just the soundtrack. I, don't know, I, I think the soundtrack's better in the first one. That you, it just kind of oh yeah yeah yeah. It's I don't know. I don't think it ruined the gameplay or anything. But um, I did like the fact that people forget this about the original. But in the original, you have to hold down in order to pogo. Like yep. you can't just push the button down. You have to hold down in order to pogo. And Ducktales two just lets you hold the button. You didn't have to hold down in Ducktales two. So gameplay wise, it actually was a little bit more convenient because you didn't have to keep pushing down 
Yeah, which is which is actually what um Remastered actually takes that from DuckTales 2, but I believe if you play on the hardest difficulty, it, it reverts back to DuckTales 1, where you have to hold down. Yeah, it's also an option in the menu. You can put on Hard Pogo. Hard Pogo, yeah, Hard Pogo. <laughs> hard Pogo. <laughs> I just love this, this, this animation is so good. Like and all these like kind of like hand drawn sprites. I have I have seen like recent Disney cartoons that don't look as good as this game does. It's fantastic. That's because they're all made on Flash. <laughs> I like I like I like this uh, this twist where they um they give the they give Scrooge the uh the giant scepter but then he's like it's just a back scratcher that duck's fucking stupid. <laughs> That's all scepters were back in the day. The only value that comes with them is just the gem. God. After all, it was just the old king's back scratcher. Ah. What the hell is this? <laughs> Low random internet cat memes. <laughs> I put that in so MBM, you might know this this better. What is the origin of the OMG? What the hell is this? Fuck if I know, dude. Well, see, see, I I've heard that 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 that, that um, people found that within the code of the game. That like that like um apparently way forward put that in when they, when they were like testing the game out. And somebody found it in the code, and when it leaked online, and this this may actually tie back into why there hasn't been another one. <laughs> apparently, apparently Disney were pissed when now because apparently like I think because Clement, if I remember this, they, we talked about this in the um, Brain Scratch Sonic Boom commentary. Yeah, we um, did. I'm pretty sure that some of that way forward confirmed that is real from the game. <laughs> That someone found, and Disney were like, "Why the hell?" Disney were like, "Why the hell would you put that in in the game for?" Like, even as a joke, why would why would you put a a bad word in a child friendly duck cartoon? They were like, so "Oh like, my god, what the hell is this?" You fucking, <laughs> you fucking blew it way forward. <laughs> so like, it, it like, I, it would suck if that's the reason why there hasn't been another one. And this is one of the the coolest, most pointless additions to the game. Woo! You can actually swim in Scroo in uh, Scrooge's money bin. And the more gold you collect, the bigger it gets too. It's completely pointless, but I I'd be lying if I said I haven't wasted at least ten minutes at a time just swimming around in there. <laughs> <laughs> So um, this just brings us to the end of the Amazon. I want to thank the uh, great Clement for joining us. Clement, where can people find you on the interwebs? I have a YouTube channel called Clement J Six Four Two. I actually played the first two Ducktales games on the NES, uh, and if you want to see me talk over those games, then go watch that. If not, <laughs> well, screw you. <laughs> wow, what a conceited internet celebrity! <laughs> <laughs> I'm better than everyone. <laughs> Please like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs>